Today we're going to learn how to insert, how to delete, and how to replace data inside an array in JavaScript. And as you guys can see, inside my document here, I have a very basic HTML5 setup. I have a paragraph tag that has an ID as test. So inside my script tags, the first thing we're going to do before we can actually do any of this is we're going to go ahead and create an array. So I'm going to go ahead and say we have a variable which is equal to names, that is equal to brackets, and then inside the brackets, we're going to go ahead and add just a couple of data. So I'm going to say we have a string called Daniel. Then I'm going to say we have one called John. And then I'm going to go ahead and say we have one called Jane. And then at the end here, we want to make sure we add a semicolon. So inside this array here, we have a couple of pieces of data. Now what I want to do here is I want to show you guys a couple of methods we can use in order to delete data, insert data, and how to replace some of these data here. So what we can do to start with here is I want to make sure we actually get the data inside the browser. So in order to get it out inside the browser, I'm going to go ahead and say we have a document dot get element by ID parentheses. And inside the parentheses, I want to make sure we have test set to the ID. Then afterwards, I want to say punctuation inner HTML is equal to a variable called names brackets, and then inside the brackets, I want to say zero. So what we're doing now is we're getting the first piece of data inside the array, which means that we start from zero, meaning zero, one, two, meaning that right now we're going to get out Daniel inside the browser. So we're going to refresh the browser. You guys can see we get Daniel. So what I want to do here is I want to try and take out one piece of data from this array here. So inside the code, in between where we created the array and where we spit it out inside the browser, I want to create an array function called pop. So I want to say we have names dot pop parentheses. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to go ahead and pop out the last piece of data we have inside this array here. Meaning that right now, if we were to actually go inside the browser, the data inside the array called Jane would actually be spit out from the array. Meaning that if I were to refer to Jane inside this array here by writing two, we would get something called undefined as you guys can see. So right now we don't have Jane inside the array anymore because we popped it out. Now we can actually go ahead and include a variable here called maybe X, which is equal to names.pop, the function, and go inside the output we have down here and change it so we instead spit out X. And what you guys will notice is that we actually get Jane because right now the data we pop out from this array is now set equal to X, which in this case is going to be Jane because it's the last data inside this array. So what we can do here is we can also go ahead and say, well, what if we want to pop out the first result, which is Daniel in this case, we can go ahead and instead of using pop, we can go ahead and use something called shift. Now if we use shift in this case, like I said, we're going to be taking out Daniel because that's the first data inside the array. So everything is going to shift down one data meaning that right now, if I were to actually print out X inside the browser, because X is equal to the shifted element, we'd actually be getting Daniel. If we were to actually print out the array, then Daniel will not be inside this array here because we took it out. So now there's only two pieces of data in here. So what we can do next here is I can actually go ahead and show you guys how to insert data at the end and at the beginning of the array by saying, okay, well, instead of pop, which was the first one that actually deleted something from the end of the array, I can go ahead and say we have something called push. So if we say push, then inside the parentheses here, I'm going to go ahead and say we have some kind of data. So let's say we have something called Frida, which is another name. I'm going to go ahead and push it inside the array that's called names, meaning that right now, if I were to actually go inside the browser, we would actually see the array right now has a data at the end of it called Frida. So what I can do now is I can actually show you guys to actually inserted another piece of data inside this array up here because as you guys can see right now, we have three pieces of data in here. And because I went ahead and used the push function down here, we actually inserted another piece of data inside this array. Meaning that right now we should actually have four results inside the array, meaning that if I were to print out X inside the browser, we're not going to get the data we have in here called Frida. We will actually get the number of items you have inside the array up here. So if I go and refresh the browser, you guys can see that we get four. So that means that we have four pieces of data right now inside names. Now let's say I want to add something in the beginning of this array. Instead of putting it at the end of the array, I can actually go ahead and use something called unshift. 
Now, unshift is very similar to shift, which was the one we just talked about. But instead of taking away a data from the beginning, we're going to add a piece of data at the beginning. So I'm going to say unshift. Now, if we go ahead and test this by saying that we said x equal to what we just did here with the unshift function, I can go ahead and go inside the browser, refresh. And as you guys can see, we still have four pieces of data, which is because right now inside this array up here, we still have four pieces of data because it just inserted a piece of data at the beginning. So now we talked about how to insert data and how to remove data from an array, at least when it comes to the end of the array. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is how to replace some of the data we have inside the array based on where inside the array is positioned. So what I can do here is I can actually go ahead and comment out what we have down here because we don't need this line of code. And instead, I'm going to go ahead and say that we have our array called names brackets. Then I'm going to say, well, let's go ahead and replace the first data inside this array, which is zero because we count from zero, one, two. I'm going to go ahead and replace this data with another name called Nick. Now by using Nick like so, I can actually go ahead and try to print out names inside the browser. Just going to go ahead and refer to the first piece of data down here called zero. And now you guys will notice we don't get Daniel anymore. We actually get Nick. So if I go refresh, you guys can see we now have Nick. So in order to replace data, we can just simply refer to the data, at least the position inside the array, and then simply set it equal to something else like I just did here. Now, the last method we're going to talk about is something called splice. Now, splice inside JavaScript is when we go inside an array and say, OK, let's start from somewhere like John, which is number one inside the array. And we can decide if we want to insert data where John is or we want to replace John with another piece of data. And we can do this with a unknown amount of data. Now to demonstrate, let's actually go ahead and remove what we have here with Nick and uncomment the variable X we have down here. So what I can do here is I can actually say, well, we have names. I'm going to say splice. Then inside the parentheses, I'm going to go ahead and delete Frida. Now the first data tells the browser which index number inside the array we want to start with. So right now, if I were to write one, it means that we're starting at John because we start at zero, one, two. Now the next piece of data, or at least the next parameter in here, tells us how many pieces of data we want to delete at John. So if we were to write zero, we would not delete John. We would just simply insert whatever data that comes after this zero down here inside the parentheses, inside where we have John inside the array. So if we were to say comma, and say, for example, Frida. And like I mentioned, we could actually decide any kind of number of data we want to insert where John is. So we can actually go and just add more comments behind it. And we can just add as many pieces of data as we want to. It's just going to get inserted where John is inside the array. So if we were to say we also have Bella, we would now have two pieces of data inserted where John is. So if we were to go down inside my document, get them by a D and say, well, let's actually go ahead and print out names. If I go inside the browser, refresh, you guys can see we get Daniel, Frida, Bella, John, and Jane. So right now we do actually have five pieces of data. Now, if I were to go in and change some of the numbers, for example, let's say we want to actually remove John when we insert these pieces of data, I can actually write one, meaning that we were going to remove one data from inside of here, which is going to be John because that's the one we're pointing at. I'm going inside my browser, refresh, and as you guys can see, John is now gone. If I were to go back and change the number from one to two, Jane would now also disappear inside the array like so. So this is how we can insert, delete and change data from arrays inside JavaScript. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.